So we're going to use limits um, to find tangents of lines. Okay, and the reason we're going to use limits, we'll get to that in a second. First of all, they've given you two equations. There's equation one, and I should have circled that entire equation. That's equation one. And this is our second equation here. And they've given you two ways to go about this. Um, first one I want you to realize is essentially um, x, think of that as like your x1 and a being kind of like x2, and this is y1 and y2. This is would be roughly the formula for slope. Okay? And all we're going to do is we're going to plug in our value. Oh, I forgot to ask. What was the... Negative 1, 8. 1, oh, okay. Negative 1, oops, negative 1 and 8, right? Yeah. Do need to get that in. So when our x value is negative 1, our y value is 8, and so that's what our f of a is going to be equal to, essentially, in our function, and we're going to leave this as our x. So we're going to go about solving it in the first equation, and then we're going to go about solving the second equation. The second equation deals with h as it approaches 0. And just to draw a rough sketch of what they're kind of trying to get at here is let's say that we have, you know, this is a quadratic. Um, actually, it faces up, but I drew it down. Anyways, um, you're getting you kind of like two points, and a tangent line doesn't touch, or sorry, doesn't cross over, but it just touches, and that will be the slope at that exact point. Well, what we're doing is as h approaches zero, we're thinking of h being an infinitesimally small number. So in order to find slope, you do need two points. We're thinking of two points that are like identically beside each other, so close that it's pretty much the rate of change at that specific point. Okay. So in the first question, our limit as x as it approaches a, and it was f at x subtract f at a divided by x minus a, right? Well, in this case, it's as a is negative 1, right? So it's as x approaches negative 1, we'll say in this question. Okay, well, if x approaches negative 1, we're going to get our f at x is our equation. This is the equation they've given us here. So we have 3x squared. I'm just going to write it the other way since that's how we're used to writing quadratics. Minus x plus 4. Subtract, and it just so happens when we plug negative 1 into this equation, our y value happens to be 8. And we'll quickly work out. This would be negative 1 squared would be 1, so that leaves it as 3. Uh, a negative negative 1 would give you at 1. So you're looking at 4 plus 1 um, plus 3, which will give you exactly 8. So perfect. That worked out great. So we know our f at a is the value of 8 in this question. This will be divided by, we still have x, minus our a value, which is negative 1. So it's the same as plus 1. Great. So we're going to simplify what's on top. And technically, I should be still writing the limit as x approaches negative 1. Um, negative 4 minus 8 is going to give us, sorry, positive 4 minus 8 is going to give us negative 4. So on top, we'll have 3x squared minus x minus 4, all divided by x plus 1. I'll do a little side calculation. I'm going to factor this over here. 3x squared minus x minus 4. 1 and 3. 2 and 2. 1 and 4. And I know they're about to add up to negative 1. So that's going to give us, I think, 3 and 1 we're looking at. 3, 4. And one of them will have to be negative. Looks like it'll have to be the 4. We'll have to add negative 4 and 3. So this will be negative 4. Do you remember how to do factoring? A little bit. Not like this, though. No, not like that. But it's OK, as long as you remember. This gives us x um, plus 1 and 3x minus 4 as our factors. Okay. So we're going to replace this value with what I've done over there, factoring. If you don't remember, just kind of go back and look over factoring. right? I'm just going to do this for now, our limit. Okay, to speed us along. So we then get x plus 1, x minus 4, divided by x plus 1. Well, this works out great. The whole goal is to really get rid of what's on the bottom here, right? Because we know if we were to go plug this limit in of negative 1, well, negative 1 plus 1 gives us 0, and it would yeah. not exist. 
So now that this happens, we can cancel out. We're left with 3x minus 4 when the limit of x as it approaches negative 1. Well, great. Now we can actually plug in our negative 1 value for x to find out this limit. So it turns out that 3, negative 1, minus 4 gives us negative 3 minus 4 equals negative 7. So our limit is negative 7. Okay. But they also wanted us to do it the other way with our other equation. Our other equation stated the limit of, again, it's still x as it approaches negative 1 because we still had negative 1 as 8 is our point. And the formula read f at a plus h subtract f at a, all divided by h, okay? Now this is a different form of that equation. In this question, what we're going to do, and remember our formula, what was it, 3x squared minus x plus 4? Yeah. That was our formula, okay? So we're going to plug the, these values. I'm going to plug a at h in for x, and I'm going to plug in a for x. Well, our a value in this case is going to be negative 1, okay? So let's kind of start with that. The limit of x as it approaches negative 1. I'm still going to write in this form f at negative 1 plus h minus f at negative 1, all divided by h. Yeah, what's h again? Just anything? h. Oh, sorry. I'm not sure. This is supposed to be as h approaches 0. Oh, yeah. Made that mistake. Sorry. That's what was our limit on the last one as h approaches 0. h is essentially going to be 0. And we know we can't just plug this directly in because it will be non-existent on the bottom, right? So we've replaced our a with negative 1, so we've done that. And now we have our function. Well, we got to put these functions in for that. So when we go to put these two functions in, I'll actually draw the straight lines here. We go to put those functions in, we have the limit as h approaches 0. Well, this function reads 3 and instead of putting in x, we're going to put negative 1 plus h squared minus negative 1 plus h plus 4. Wait, we don't have to put that No, exactly. That's what we've done. We've now replaced each x value, okay, oh, okay. specifically with that value. Okay. And that's where the x would be. And then subtract the same equation, but when it's negative 1. So now it's... 3, negative 1 squared, minus negative 1, plus 4, which we've already technically solved, okay? All divided by h, okay? Does that make sense? We replaced the x values with our negative 1 in this case. That's what we did, okay? So now we're going to work this stuff out on top, specifically the stuff on top. So the limit as h approaches 0. Well, this will become... 3, um, that's going to be h squared minus 2h plus 1. Okay, I just quickly foiled that part in my head. This will become uh, plus 1 minus h plus 4. And over here, do you know what we're going to get? Uh, distribute the negative. Okay, so negative, negative 1 squared is, is positive 1. one sorry. Yeah, so that's 3. This will become plus 1, so 3 plus 1 plus 4. We already knew that answer from before, right? All above each. Okay, great. So let's distribute now this 3 and try to collect any like terms we can. Limit of h that approaches 0. This becomes 3h squared minus 6h plus 3 plus 1 minus h plus 4 and then minus 8. Okay, so we dropped all of those brackets. Everything's able to be collect all of our like terms. So let's get like terms here. Well, I got this h value and this h value. And I got some constants, which I'm going to put together. Okay? Okay? Well, this will become the limit of h as it approaches 0. We're going to get 3h squared. Uh, minus 7h uh, minus 1 all divided by our h value here okay that work out right oh no I missed one I knew I missed one plus 1 so 3 plus 1 is 4 plus 4 is 8 minus 8 is 0 
And I knew that didn't work out right. Good. So that doesn't exist anymore. Okay. So now what I can do is I can find a common factor. And a common factor would be the term h in this question. So we're going to take out our common factor of h. Okay. So we're going to take it out of these brackets. So the limit Exactly. So h comes out, and we're left with 3h minus 7 divided by h. <clears throat> well, our h's cancel out, and now we can plug 0 in for h. So we get 3 times 0 minus 7. Well, what's 3 times 0? Zero? Minus 7? Seven. Seven. Negative 7. Is that the same as we got as our other answer? Yeah. Yeah, just one a little more complex. So it doesn't matter, right? Which equation? It doesn't matter which way we use it. We were able to find negative 7 as our answer in both. I'm just going to highlight them. So we got negative 7 there and negative 7 there. Both the same answer. 